If you like to watch the world burn, or if you're the doom and gloom type, I've got a treat for you. This is what this video is going to be about. I had no intention of making it. However, some data has showed up in the last couple of weeks, plus some anecdotes and talking to other realtors and lawyers. I have to cover this because I don't think it's getting enough attention. There's some surprises in here, so stay tuned. Hi, my name is Vass, and I'm a chartered professional accountant by training. I'm a full-time realtor that's built and invested in real estate right here in Toronto, York region, and in secondary markets. Now, let's get into the video. Now, this video came about because what I thought was happening on the ground based on anecdotes and talking to other people and then pulling up the data, I just realized we had a big difference in terms of real life and data, and we had to reconcile that difference. What do I mean by this? Most of us, when I say us, realtors, investors, we thought one thing was happening in our little bubble, and then the data is showing something totally different, especially in condos. And this was a little bit shocking for me. I'm going to explain in a little bit. Now, let's set the stage in terms of what's happening in July. So June was a pretty bad month. And in July, looking into early July, traffic and showings and everything of that nature kept going down, down, down to the point where I don't even know how, how low it's going to go. The only properties that seem to be doing somewhat decent if you have a property with a legal basement apartment, or even if it's not legal, if you have a rentable basement apartment, right now you're probably gonna get multiple offers. Aside from that, good luck. Now let's set the stage and give you what you came for, all the negative stuff. So the consumer confidence index, um, it's at an all time low. Actually, it's so low, it's as low as when COVID just started. So when everybody was scared and we thought we were done, that is where we're at right now. Number two, inflation. There's no end to it right now. We know that the US is in a technical recession right now, pending some numbers, but from what we know, it's two quarters now that they're negative GDP growth. Canada is lagging by a quarter. So we had a positive growth quarter, and I think in Q1, Q2 was negative, and then Q3 is most likely gonna be negative. So we're gonna be in a technical recession by fall. And then hopefully that puts an end to the rate hikes. We've also had a bunch of job losses in the tech sector and a bunch of other places. So things are obviously not looking very good. But the biggest thing is the uncertainty with rate hikes because that is what's driving or eroding demand right now and is keeping all buyers on the sideline. Let's start with our first very basic trend. So every time we had a rate hike, immediately offer volume went down and it went down fast. So this is for Toronto, all property types. As you can see in March, rate hike is the red bar, Pro offers went down. Same thing in April, same thing in May. The data doesn't show here, but that's what happened. And we'll have another rate hike today. Where does that leave us? Well, guess what? We're going to have offers go down. But here's the problem. Offers are already so low. I don't know how, like, can we go to zero? This is why I strictly stick to showings and offers because that is telling me what is happening on the ground. And if there's activity, which usually leads to transactions completing. Toronto detached since the peak. Showings are down 52%. Offers are down 71%. This is pretty standard across the board for detached. Although Toronto has dropped a little bit more in the last few weeks than other areas. Nonetheless, nothing overly shocking here. Markham, similar to Toronto, a little bit more foot traffic, but offers, which is the more important factor here, down 71%. Even my darling Whitby, which I love talking about, is also down roughly 70%, again, in line with Toronto and uh, Markham. Brampton is a surprise here. So Brampton is actually outperforming right now since the peak. They're actually holding up better than Toronto, Whitby, or Markham. So showings from, from the peak are down. So are offers, but not as much as everybody else. I don't know what to make of it because their prices are also going down and they're going down pretty quick. Just because they're getting more offers doesn't mean that they're actually doing better or their market's healthier. I think specific to Brampton, I think people just throw in low ball offers, seeing if it sticks. It's kind of like a Kijiji thing. Like, oh, let me offer somebody a hundred bucks for something that's worth a thousand. Like, it's not gonna work. That's what I think is happening. I don't know. But from my understanding, talking to people that actually work in this, in this area, this is what they're saying. And now here's the problem, child. Toronto condos is actually very concerning. So 81% drop in offers since the peak. Condos never did that well during COVID to begin with. So they didn't rise in price much. They always lagged because everybody was leaving the city. And now with rents going up, I was under the impression that, you know what, that's going to put a floor on drops in prices for condos. And we're going to have a pretty healthy condo market, regardless of what's happening outside of the core or outside of Toronto. If we look at where we are, I mean, offers are so low on a day-to-day -day basis that we're nearing zero at this point. There's definitely the perfect storm brewing for condos to take a big big beating right now if things don't improve and if sentiment doesn't improve in the market. How is sentiment going to improve? The only way it's going to improve is once we have 
some sort of confidence that we're not going to have crazy interest rate hikes. So that means inflation has to be under control uh, or we have to be in a recession where things just slow down and the government is no longer going to raise interest rates. I hope you got your fill of bad news. Obviously, the world's not going to end, but we're in for some turbulent times over the next few months. My biggest concern is come the fall market, if we don't see some sort of stabilization in prices, who's to say how, how low we go? I mean, in the fall, if we don't have some sort of visibility or line of sight on interest rates, I think we're going to be in trouble. If you don't have to transact in the next little while, don't. Now, I understand, obviously, in some cases, I have clients that have to transact because they actually need a place to live and interest rates and this and that and timing the market is not of utmost importance when you don't have a place to live. But for everybody else that has the luxury of waiting, then just wait it out. This has been an incredibly interesting time to try to analyze the market. I try to apply common sense and logical approach, but it's just that every single time you do something new, a new variable will come in and it will completely destroy everything. But you know what? At least I'm not Bob from CMHC. And here's what I'm talking about. Hey, look who's back. It's our friend Bob from CMHC. Now, Bob made a prediction in September 2020 that the real estate market was going to crash. We're going to go down 20% and we're done. Turn the lights off. Now, you can tell here, Bob is pretty scared. And I'm going to admit, I was scared too. In the beginning of COVID, we had no idea what was going to happen. So his forecast actually fed into the narrative that real estate was done. Bob also has arguably one of the toughest jobs. Who can predict this stuff? Nobody can. But he doubled down on his wrong prediction back in 2020. So that's where I kind of have an issue with it. But Bob is back at it again. He has a new forecast. This is their new forecast as of July 2022. And the agency is not predicting a sharp correction because it said a housing shortage will support prices. Who knows? Is Bob right this time or is he wrong? What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, feel free to text or email me. I love chatting real estate. And if I can help you out, I will or at least point you in the right direction.